While the technology has been available for decades, unmanned ground vehicles haven't conquered the battlefield just yet. In truth, they still have trouble executing classic combat operations. The Russian-built Uran-9 UGV was first deployed in combat during the Syrian Civil War. Armed with a remotely operated turret that carries light and medium caliber weapons and missiles, two anti-tank guided missile launchers on each side, and six rocket-propelled reactive flamethrowers, the robot is capable of engaging targets kilometers away and penetrating armors 800 millimeters deep. That is, if it can detect the enemy. The Iran-9's underwhelming performance during its first mission proved why robots haven't yet overtaken military warfare. But four years later, the drone may have finally found redemption. Development Russia is one of many nations that have aggressively moved toward deploying unmanned ground vehicles in combat. As early as 2015, the Russian Military Industry Committee set the objective of deploying 30% of their national kinetic weapons on remote control platforms within one decade. Presently, UGVs are successfully employed in roles such as clearing mines and IEDs in the Middle East and Central Asia, with the Euron 6 being a notable example. Nevertheless, Drones have been seldom deployed for complex operational tasks, like detecting and engaging enemy forces. The tracked unmanned ground vehicle known as Euron 9 was developed and produced in 2015 by Russian military equipment manufacturer JSC-766 UPTK. That December, Rushtek Corporation's subsidiary Rosaboron Export announced that the company would soon promote the combat robot in international markets. Iran 9 was then unveiled to the public during the Army 2016 International Military Technical Forum in Russia in September of 2016. The vehicle was designed to provide remote reconnaissance and fire support, particularly for roles regarding counterterrorism measures and urban environments, and aimed to offer maximum protection to the personnel. Consequently, Iran 9 was fitted with weapons and sensors to improve the infantry's combat effectiveness. Afterward, the Russian army procured 22 models that were attached to support infantry and engineer units instead of forming independent formations. In addition, Iran 9 was made available for export by the state-owned Rushtek Corporation. Design Iran 9's layout is in the shape of a rhombus. It weighs 12 tons and measures 5.12 meters, meaning it weighs one-fifth and measures over half the length of the T-90 tank. It is powered by a diesel-electric engine and can reach 35 kilometers per hour on highways and 10 kilometers off-road. Its chassis is mounted on a six-road wheeled track, offering increased cross-country mobility. Additionally, it is equipped with an idler and a drive sprocket. Protected by steel plates, Iran 9 is armored from shell splinters and small arms. Still, it is inherently vulnerable to heavy machine guns, rocket-propelled grenades, or other commonly used weapons. In terms of armament, Iran 9 features a remotely operated turret that can mount an assortment of light and medium caliber weapons and missiles, incorporating one stabilized 30mm 2A72 automatic cannon and a Kalashnikov PKT-PKTM 7.62mm coaxial machine gun, the robot vehicle can offer defense against ground and low-flying aerial targets and ground-based light armored targets alike. With two 9M121 Ataka anti-tank guided missile launchers on each side, the vehicle can engage enemy main battle tanks and several other armored targets. The Ataka missiles provide a firing range of 0.4 to 6 kilometers and can penetrate armor as deep as 800 millimeters behind explosive reactive armor. Furthermore, the robot also counts six 93 millimeter rocket-propelled Schmel M reactive flamethrowers, three on each side of the main turret, which can destroy protective shelters and fortifications. As for sensors, the system is equipped with remote control modules atop, 
including a laser warning system and electro-optic and thermal imaging cameras. On board, the fire control system incorporates automatic target detection, identification and tracking devices, and a ballistic computer. Moreover, Uran-9 can detect and track enemy targets 6 kilometers away in daylight and 3 kilometers at night. The vehicle would soon enter service and see combat for the first time, proving why UGVs have not conquered the battlefield just yet. Real Combat Operation The Uran-9 complex actually consists of four unmanned ground vehicles, a mobile command station, and a tractor to transport two robots. Each can be operated either autonomously or manually. Meanwhile, the four vehicles can network through a Skynet unified tactical management system, and the group can spread four miles apart or line in a column formation. When operating autonomously, the vehicle identifies, detects, tracks, and engages enemy targets as pre-programmed by an operator. Moreover, it employs detour pathfinding for obstacle avoidance. In contrast, manual control requires a single operator to manage the system from the mobile command and control station. The cabin is mounted on a 6x6 tactical truck and operates 3 kilometers away, but it can also be controlled with a portable panel. By May of 2018, the Russian military had officially combat-tested the robot in the Syrian civil war. However, for all its firepower, Uran-9 proved to be underqualified to actually detect enemy forces and accurately fire. Senior Research Officer Andrei Anisimov reportedly stated, quote, Modern Russian combat unmanned ground vehicles are not able to perform the assigned tasks in the classical types of combat operations. The senior research officer explained that the sensors were incapable of spotting enemies beyond two kilometers, despite the claimed range. Furthermore, the OCH-4 optical station gave out multiple interferences, as it did not allow detection of the enemy's optical observation and targeting devices. Making matters worse, both the sensors and the weapons were rendered useless by a lack of stabilization when the vehicle was advancing. There were significant delays when fire commands were issued on several occasions, and at least once, the order didn't even go through. Plus, the tracked suspension required frequent repairs. But perhaps most problematic of all was the fact that despite the alleged range, the remote control system only proved effective about 300 to 400 meters away in lightly urbanized environments, which significantly endangered the control vehicle. Redemption Unlike unmanned aerial vehicles, ground vehicles' performance depends on landscape features that might disrupt control signals. In Syria, the Iran-9 often suffered lapses of up to one minute. Twice, contact was lost for well over an hour. Plus, modern war zones like Syria experience considerable electromagnetic activity, rendering the vehicle vulnerable to hostile electronic attacks. The manufacturer responded to the machine's poor performance and focused on improving its deficiencies. Meanwhile, its underwhelming execution in Syria proves that robot tanks are not yet ready for the battlefield, although the component technologies have been available for decades. Still, as of 2022, the Russian ground forces plan to conduct large-scale tests with the Uran-9, as they intend to purchase a significant number of them. Chief General Oleg Selyukov affirmed that a so-called experimental military service will be carried out as the tank becomes operational. Adjunct Senior Fellow at the Center of New American Security Think Tank, Samuel Bendit, added that, quote, According to current MOD discussions, Iran 9 may be fully expendable in combat, so the MOD will have to find a role for this rather expensive UGB, where its loss would not be profoundly felt by the military budget. We may see an evolution of UGV usage across the Russian military as it experiments with different combat platforms, from smaller, less expensive vehicles like Norecta and Platforma to larger, expensive ones like Uran-9, to arrive at a final consideration regarding which UGVs it will be using in future combat. In truth, Andrei Anisimov concluded in 2018 that it would take 10 to 15 years before UGVs are ready for complex tasks. 
thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more history-inspired stories, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels, where we publish new content every day.